Magicka Sorcerer is so freaking bad. It's the most dog water piece of sh class has ever been the misfortune of playing ever. A complete waste of a character slot. You might as well just convert this thing over to my crafter. Call it a day. Wait until next patch. This class is trash. Or at least that's what I thought. So, contrary to popular belief, the Magic Sorcerer, yes, while it is in a pretty bad position, um, it can be played. It's actually very, very viable and very fun to play. This build I'm going to show you guys is one of my most favorite. I actually played this off stream for a few hours today, so I do have a little short clip for you guys. And it is actually a lot, a lot of fun. And we don't even use any wards. It's a max spell damage crit build, and I think you guys are absolutely going to love it. I've had a blast playing it, so without further ado, let's hop into it. Welcome back guys and hopefully you all had a great and luscious turkey day weekend. I know it's Sunday, you know, your work is right around the corner on Mondays. You gotta kinda get in the mindset, you know. I'm 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 still pretty uh pretty fat from all the turkey and ham myself, but welcome guys so we'll hop into the character sheet and all that good stuff but first guys please like and sub to the video okay i need some help on the youtube algorithm been down the dumps lately that really boosts my spirits thank you thank you very much now you guys are also going to get a two for today in this one it's actually kind of like a three for i'm going to go over three alternative builds you can possibly run very similar to my magden you guys seem to appreciate that so i figured i would throw out some viable options for you all so you don't have to burn what brain cells are left after dealing with your family for the holiday weekend <laughs> all right so let's hop into it so taking a look at the character sheet here now uh, we're going to go over to build number one because this is so there's two different builds build number one is going to be a high risk high reward type of build there is a uh, a little bit more damage on it but uh, you do have to play a little bit riskier and then the second builds more of a yeah, kind of slowed down a little bit more healing more consistent play style it doesn't yield better results but uh you will see better results out of it if you're like an average to a newer player now if you're a very high skilled player now i would highly suggest this very first build so ideal race will probably be khajiit at the moment of making this video i did not have a race change token but um yeah so i am a high elf right now you can do high elf you, you can do breton it's fine you can do dark elf for khajiit would be my four uh, suggested one smoked bear haunch is going to be your food no do not run vampire on this build you do not need it whatsoever the vampire is really going to hinder your sustain right now we are sitting at perfect sustain perfect harmony man i absolutely love it also, I will be streaming this. My next stream, it's either going to be sometime today, hopefully today's Sunday when this video goes live. I will be streaming this build as well, so do not forget to hit the bell icon. Otherwise, uh, YouTube won't notify you when I go live. All right, so running the Shadow Mundus. Uh, we'll kind of buff up a little bit. This is, again, this is nowhere near what your fool will be buffed up in, uh, in cereal, right? So kind of looking at, uh, you know, 5,300 spell damage. This one gets get up to over 6K spell damage. Now in the secondary setup, I'm going to show you guys, you can get up to like 6,500. But uh, just for the sake of this video, here's all of our recoveries. It seems pretty low. You don't have to worry about that since we're rocking tri-stat potions as well as one of our sets. You probably already saw proc is engine guardian, so... Uh, let's go ahead and start the very first set mechanical acuity guys this is the most slept on set of the entire patch there's no other set in the game that's going to give you more burst than mechanical acuity all right it's very beautiful on the mag sork actually the way it lines up so every time acuity procs you're going to be running overload so long long story short with acuity uh, if you're not sure what it does, I'll kind of hover here and let you guys read it. But the TLDR of Acuity is uh, whenever you deal damage, uh, you'll get uh, a little four second buff. And if you don't deal any crit damage within that, you know, you have to deal damage, obviously. But as long as it's not crit damage, you get another stack for four seconds. Each one of these stacks will increase your critical strike chance for by 20%. Upon reaching 100% crit chance, you have about four seconds of, you know, 100% crit chance in all of your abilities. So um, naturally, you can time out a pretty, pretty nasty burst with this. And the good thing about it is that you don't have to wait on the cooldown on this. You don't have to worry about when it procs because when this procs, you can just pop overload. You won't be using overload. So when acuity procs, you're going to pop overload, do all your bursts, do your thing, rotation, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as acuity is over, yep, just untoggle your overload and wait for your next acuity proc. Very, very simple. 
Now we're running sharpened on this. You don't need charge. Also running disease since we're running crushing shock and in one of the other builds that we have, you actually get all three status effects. Um, disease is one that we're missing. It's actually very, very strong for the healing reduction. We need a little down target. So we're running this on the front bar and that I do have three body pieces all well fitted. Medium armor. This is supposed to be a one light, five medium, one heavy build, but the RNG gods did not give me a medium engine guardian shoulder. So, uh, yeah, it feels bad. So sad. I, I, I spent 25 keys. And I kept getting light and heavy, light and heavy. So, um, I'm pretty upset by that. All right. It, uh, it is what it is. So right now we're in, uh, one, four, two, we, 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 we got two heavy. Uh, so I mean, it actually, no, we got two light. It is what it is. I'll, I'll stop rambling now. So acuity front bar, back bar, we're running rallying cry. So this is pretty, pretty awesome. It does give you a lot of crit chance, max match again. When battle spirit is active, you get 300 weapon and spell damage. You also get a huge burst of critical resistance, which is all, which is all you're ever going to need. You don't need any more crit resist on your build. Other than that, I unfortunately do have extra impenetrable impenetrable traits so therefore you can min max this build a lot better than what i have i just don't have the transmute stones to change everything so that's going to lead us into uh set number two I also rallying cross jewelry i don't know if i showed you guys these are spoil yada yada engine guardian is probably the best monster set for this class for the simple fact that it does not matter what health bump you get or what proc that you get rgb Health is good. The healing is phenomenal. It's like 800 every second. It's very, very powerful. Magica and stamina, the amounts that Engine Guardian gives you equates to about 2,000 recovery during that time. So um, it's actually really, really strong. Assuming it doesn't get interrupted. But uh, if you get stamina, you can toggle it over to Magica. If you get Magica, that's freaking awesome. Or if you get health, well, you don't have a, you know, you don't really have a lot of heals on this build other than your bird, which is going to get digged down in an open world. And there's a couple little tricks I'll show you guys. I'll play around that in a minute. But uh, we'll go ahead and finish over the set. So on all your big pieces, always run tri stats. Um, a heavy piece, uh, this is Galant's chain. This is a special name trainee item. So uh, always go heavy reinforcing your chest. Ideally, you want all well fitted. And then one heavy reinforced chest would be the ideal loadout for this. All the big pieces, obviously, but try stats. And then our mythic item is Sea Serpent Squirrel. If you're not running Sea Serpent Squirrel on the Mag Sork, you're doing something wrong because you literally have no negative effects from this since you have access to Streak, Roll Dodging, and B Hopping. You have no excuses to be slowed ever. Take some time, practice some B Hopping, get your streaks down pat. This is going to give you 15% overall increase in your damage, which is hellacious since everything's ranged. You don't, don't have to worry about closing the gap on your target because you have Streak. So. Um, all infused spell damage on your jewelry because this is going to be a max spell damage build. It's very important to have your spell damage as high as possible just to make sure you have your heals as high as possible. And I don't know why this is bothering me so much with this stupid ass Twilight Matriarch in the background attacking the old Frank over there. It, it's, it's triggering my PTSD. I don't know why. It just is. Oh my god, he went back to do it. Stop! Leave him alone! Bro! Yo, leave Frank alone. We're just gonna unsummon you. Just, just, just stay dead. Good lord. Good lord. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I think that's gonna cover all the sets. I forgot to cover my back bar. Um, it is a ice staff defending. This is gonna help with your blocking, you know, mitigation, sustain, stamina wise. And uh and berserker enchantment on the back bar. You know, when you're backpedaling, it's nice to have a increase in your weapon spell damage because it's actually increased your healing and then on the off chance you can go to your front bar you can also use this enchantment to line up a little bit with your burst okay so i think that uh that about does it for the entire gear i'm trying to be very thorough this time my magna did leave out some things i feel really bad so crystal frags pretty much a staple haunting curse now we are running the twilight matriarch um surprisingly guys uh this is actually really really good i know a lot of you all in the comments are like well uh, when you're one bxing horcrux this bird's gonna get digged down well there's a few little tricks you can do you can turn your health on your matriarch to see what it is and if you streak a couple times so this guy you know how he's just kind of floating near you um he will actually just just teleport to you i know in the house He's just flapping his wings away. But if you double streak, this guy will actually teleport to you. It's like a get out of jail free card for your matriarch. It's it's actually pretty cool. 
Um, so um, it is a, a huge burst seal, guys. Like, we can kind of look at the tooltip on this. I'm not sure this is fully, but it should be like around 14k burst steel, and it's pretty cheap too. And if you're running in a group, this is going to heal everyone. It's only 3200 to cast, which is pretty phenomenal with no cost reduction whatsoever. So crushing shock is our spammable. You can swap this out for Ellie weapon. That's entirely up to you. Since I am a controller user, um, I do find that crushing shock is just more beneficial overall for me. Streak is also our gap closer. Get the hell out button. Our CC uh, absolute must in the sorcerer kit, and then the ult on front bar is power overload. Now the back bar is very very plain Jane. We got dark conversion. We have obviously got double bar. The matriarch sad moment. Your resolving vigor critical surge boundless storm these two pair very well together because all your crits are going to heal you for a lot and then you know when you allocate your cp and stuff like that you can actually increase the healing of this it's actually pretty nice then on the back bar we have temporal guard which is going to give you a uh, minor protection on your back bar now for this particular setup there are a few different skills that you can possibly toss onto the build if you don't want to run the pets you can uh, put on elemental susceptibility this is going to give you access to a major breach which is going to increase your damage by approximately 10 percent and it's going to inflict whoever you're targeting with this so with uh, all the stats infects you know concussed uh chill burning which is a uh, very very strong as well and then on the back bar typically what you want to do you will want to swap this to a restoration staff uh, which i you can guys um with so the thing is if you try to put on a resto staff with ryan cry at some points you are a little squishy it can be done i tried it you can also use blessings of restoration if you feel like you need a burst heal i actually probably want to use combat prayer but the thing is you already get minor resolve and it's very expensive and the healing is not nearly as much as flappy bird so flappy bird to me is actually very very strong and even if your bird does get clipped you know it gets decapitated gets you know sent into oblivion it's okay because you do have your critical surge you know crit heals with balanced storm you still have access to a resolving vigor which is a pretty nice tool tip as well when you have everything kind of you know laid out there and then you also have access to dark conversion and this dark conversion is actually a pretty decent heal by itself it's 11,000 health and it can also crit so it's actually not that detrimental when your pet dies you just gotta streak a couple times roll dodge get the cast off and uh, you're good to go okay guys so hopping into a build number two now this is going to be very similar to the first one except we are going to change our bar setups kind of very similar to what i showed you so skill wise we are going to swap to the secondary bar setup that i showed you here like i said build number two is much more consistent more reliable so what are we running it's pretty much mechanical acuity um also you don't necessarily have to run mechanical acuity if you do not want to because it does require a little bit of mental fortitude to kind of line up your burst if you just want to toss something on you just be like horcrux brother i just want to hit some buttons and do some big ass damage okay just put on burning spell weave instead of mechanical acuity it's going to behave very very similar you will have a little bit less crit damage but you'll have more crit chance you don't kind of buy itself so there is some ebb and flow if you run a uh, burning spell weave you'll be forced to run five light one medium one heavy which isn't the end of the world but it does make you pretty squishy when the night blades come out still with the uh in cap or you know into a bow you know whatever or a dawn breaker to the face it it still does hurt you do have a pretty low physical resistances if you want to go that route but uh build number two is going to have a mars bomb in place of rallying cry mars bomb is very very consistent set i had this on my back bar as well all infused spell damage really the only thing that changed is a mars bomb obviously and then the weapon on the back bar we're going to have a restoration staff of mars bomb and defending and then essentially this is just going to keep your heals up as high as possible because i realized that um some players can kind of order sword kind of average sword when you don't have wards this is a very very difficult class to play because you don't have any passives that intrinsically you know mitigate anything so you have to rely on your own like wits your own skill your own awareness to uh, avoid damage where possible now Mar mars bomb is kind of like a get out of jail free card it does purge a lot of effects there's a really nice ongoing killing effect on your back bar when abilities are falling on and you know falling off and applying so you do get a nice you know passive healing over time and, you know as well as in rapid regeneration and vigor and plus all your crits are going to heal you so uh, overall it's just like a more consistent way to play but again your damage is going to be a little bit lower so in short your two offensive sets you can either run burning spell weave or acuity right and then for your defensive sets you can run rallying cry or mars bomb it's really up to you okay 
And then just one thing to note, just make sure your health, um, when your pet, if you're running a pet, try to have around 30K maximum health. But if you don't have a pet, also try to have around 30K maximum health. I just so you're not getting one shot in Cyrodiil because that's a feel bad, so sad moment uh, when you run all the way to the keep and you get ganked from stealth and it's like, oh, I'm dead. Time to play Running Simulator 2022, almost 2023. All right, so hopping into the champion points, uh, this is going to be a uh, very different okay so we're running fighting finesse just for the crit damage you've run an acuity we got focus mending i actually prefer to have focus mending over ironclad or a duelist rebuff this patch just because the sort needs healing you need huge amounts of healing you don't really necessarily need the mitigation you need a way to regain that health once it's lost okay and then we have mastered arms and deadly aim this is going to bur increase all of our burst damage you know pretty much across the board i don't have any mitigation passes because Quite frankly, I feel that Fighting Finesse kind of doubles as offensive and defensive passive and Focus Mending is just better than Ironclad or Duelist Rebuff, you know? And then we go over into the Red Tree. Um, I actually do have some points into Fortified. You don't necessarily have to put them here, but definitely have Survival Instincts. And then when, when we open up this tree here, I um, always go with Sustain by Suffering and Pain's Refuge. Um, if your Sustain is okay, um, I found that my Sustain is absolutely perfect on this as long as you're keeping track of filtering over your stamina into your magica from time to time um, you can probably drop sustain by suffering and go with relentlessness so when you get cc just kind of give you that major protection so you can get burst you know right out the gate when you get in capped or whatever and that does it for the build guys thank you so much for watching until the end do not forget to send me your pvp top five clips i want to have an episode out uh, sometime this week please i need some bangers guys much appreciated okay and if you want to help support the channel the best way to do so is with a simple like and sub but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute chad get shout outs in all my videos access to one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching access to private discord channels where you can just chat with me kind of pretty much whenever you want run some battlegrounds with, with me from you know from time to time off stream um i do have patreon also youtube memberships if you join the youtube memberships you get access to all that stuff and plus you got all kinds of cool emojis and spam during the stream chat which is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. But uh, thanks guys for watching. I suck at outros, so uh, see ya.